Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we'll delve into the intriguing world of trust in the digital age with Rachel Botsman's enlightening work, Who Can You Trust? This thought provoking book deconstructs the evolution of trust. From its traditional roots to its current state in our network driven society, where we often place our confidence in complete strangers online. Botsman, an acclaimed writer and reputable speaker, whose insights have graced publications like Wired and the New York Times, urges us to consider the profound impact that emerging technologies, particularly blockchains, will have on our understanding and practice of trust. This engaging read is ideal for anyone gripped by the rapid transformation of social paradigms the convergence of technology and trust, and those who seek a glimpse into the societal shifts that the next decade may hold. It is a book that will resonate with forward thinkers, tech enthusiasts, and futurologists who are eager to explore the depth and breadth of trust. They'll close its pages equipped with a new lens through which to view both current trends and future possibilities. Join us in unraveling the fabric of trust with Rachel Botsman's Who Can You Trust? and gain insights into what it means to believe in our hyperconnected era. Who Can You Trust? How Technology Brought Us Together and Why It Could Drive Us Apart. Introduction The Evolution of Trust from intimate circles to blockchain revolutions. Trust. It's the invisible glue holding human interaction together, from personal relationships to global economies. But how did we come to trust strangers with our lives, our homes, and our hard-earned cash? In Rachel Botsman's compelling narrative, we're about to discover a seismic shift in the underpinnings of trust throughout the ages. Once upon a time, trust was a local affair, solidified through handshakes and eye contact in the small enclaves of society. Move forward to the rapid growth of industrial societies, and we find a more structured, hierarchical approach where colossal institutions, banks, governments, and media held the torch of trust. Fast forward to today, and the landscape is strikingly different. Welcome to the digital age where trust leaps from the hands of these imposing institutions and lands squarely in the hands of, well, each other. So what sparked this revolutionary transition? Here's the scoop. We're navigating through a passage where trust is decentralizing, moving laterally across networks of peers. Think about the way Uber, Airbnb, and Alibaba operate. These aren't just business models, they're trust platforms springboards for millions to hop into rides with strangers and sleep in the beds of people they've never met. Pioneering the modern marketplace, these companies stand on the trust of countless individuals, all interconnected through sophisticated technologies. This journey with Rachel Botsman isn't only about the what and the who, it's about the how. How did Maghribi traders of the 11th century lay down the early framework of a commercial trust system, one that echoes in today's digital feedback loops? How is it that the fear of hopping into a stranger's car has transformed into the casual act of hailing a ride on a smartphone? And hold on tight, because the trust tale has a new twist with blockchain technology. This isn't just any twist. It's the kind that could yet again redefine trust for future generations. Blockchains offer a way to record transactions securely, transparently, and permanently. The potential implications for trust are monumental. Embarking on this excursion through history, we peer into the past, examine the present, and squint at the silhouette of the future. From tightly knit clans to futuristic tech, the chronicles of trust await. Are you ready to dive into the story of trust's evolution? Part 1. Unlocking the World. The Quintessential Role of Trust in Daily Life. The concept of trust might seem intangible and varied, but at its core, it's the linchpin of progress, the key that unlocks the immense potential of human cooperation and ambition. Trust is more than a philosophical ideal. 
It's the practical dynamic that propels us into action, allows us to engage with the unknown, and facilitates the complexities of modern life. Picture your average day and imagine it stripped of trust. Suddenly, the routines you take for granted, a click to purchase online, the swipe of a card, the roar of jet engines carrying you to new destinations, become impassable mountains. Our trust in people, systems, and technologies is the invisible magic that turns these mountains back into molehills. It is trust that oils the gears of our everyday reality. Yet, trust works because it is reciprocal. We trust when there is equilibrium, when the risks of deceit are overshadowed by the rewards of loyalty. The scales of trust tip in favor of mutual benefit, where the cost of betrayal outweighs the short-term gains of dishonesty. This dynamic interplay is not a new human invention. It's been around for centuries. Take the Maghribi traders, the savvy businessmen of the 11th century. They faced a dilemma resonating through the ages. How to trust intermediaries with precious cargo destined for foreign shores. Their ingenious solution would resonate through the centuries. Should their Sicilian partners renege on their agreements or prove duplicitous, they'd be cut off from a lucrative network of commerce. Exclusion thus became a powerful deterrent, anchoring a trust-based system that was remarkably effective. Their strategy was akin to a medieval rating system, a precursor to the ones that underpin our digital economies. The Maghribi traders weren't just merchants. They were architects of trust, framing a system robust enough to traverse time and evolve with society. This rating system didn't disappear. It adapted, morphed, and is now a cornerstone of today's interconnected marketplace. As the narrative progresses, we'll witness how this ancient logic of trust has been refined and amplified, transforming into a digital currency of credibility that is indispensable in the world we navigate today. Part 2. A New Era of Trust. Moving from Institutions to Individuals. The wheels of commerce have always turned on the axis of trust. Yet, the way we trust has undergone dramatic transformations, akin to revolutions rewriting the rules of interaction. We've journeyed from tight-knit communities to sprawling global networks, and now we're on the cusp of the third trust revolution in human history. In the bygone epoch, local trust reigned supreme. Transactions were face to face, with the reliability of trade anchored in personal connections. This was the era of the handshake deal, where business took place within the immediate orbit of familiar faces and well known places. Then came the tidal wave of industrialization, and with it, a new trust paradigm. Society became more complex, spread across greater distances with traders rarely meeting eye to eye. A higher order of stability was needed, and so emerged the institutions, banks, governments, judicial systems, guardians of institutional trust. These entities were the sentinels of society's transactions, upholders of a system that required the public's confidence in their authority. As we stand today peering into the digital horizon, we witness a striking shift the dawn of distributed trust. This reshaping of trust's landscape isn't vertical, descending from the heights of institutional power. No, it's horizontal, spreading across a network of peers, creating a web of trust in which individuals play the lead roles. Consider the allure of an Airbnb stay over a traditional hotel. Instead of the brand name assurance of a Hilton, we lean into the authenticity promised by the placid smile of a five-star host. This is trust, decentralized and reallocated to the hands of fellow users, creating a person-to-person -person tapestry that feels more genuine, more human. Our behaviors reflect these changes. Despite the age-old warnings not to engage with strangers, that instinctive caution is set aside with the ping of a smartphone, signaling our ride is here. The once unthinkable act of entering a stranger's car is now the unremarkable norm. These new chapters of trust bring their own breed of innovation and uncertainty, reminiscent of when barter gave way to the abstraction of paper money. 
Skepticism was natural then, as it is now, but each leap in trust's evolution has unlocked unprecedented potential. Now, as trust finds new pathways, our access to goods and services becomes more diverse and immediate. With a shared willingness to trust in strangers and the systems connecting us, we are stepping into an expansive world that promises to be as liberating as it is interconnected. Part 3. The Erosion of Institutional Trust in the Digital Age In a time marked by rapid digitalization, we are bearing witness to the erosion of institutional trust, a trust that once seemed as sturdy as the institutions it upheld. The roots of this shift extend deep and wide, and the tremors from the 2008 financial crisis have only accelerated the crumbling of faith in the financial giants and government bodies that we once deemed too steadfast to falter. The cataclysmic market crash peeled back the veneer to expose raw realities of greed and systemic malpractice. It wasn't merely a financial quake. It was a seismic event that shattered the illusion of unwavering institutional trust. But indeed, this unraveling had been in motion even before the markets fell apart. Our digital age was the breeding ground for a new transparency, a crystal clear lens through which the inner workings of institutions became visible to the public eye. Technology, particularly the internet, has ferried us into an era where information flows free and wide. Consider the case of WikiLeaks, a platform that has famously flung open the doors to the corridors of power, allowing every curious citizen a front row seat to witness the dealings that shape the world. Suddenly, nothing seemed beyond scrutiny. The Panama Papers further dented the armor of institutional trust. In 2016, the release of these documents cast harsh light on the artful dodging of taxes by elites and public figures alike, from celebrated athletes to heads of state. It painted a picture of double standards, a world where the majority toil under the weight of regulations, while a select few seem to slip through the net with ease. The emergence of social media only compounds the problem. The landscape of information has turned into a wild frontier where fact, fiction, and sensationalism often collide. Stories with dubious origins find themselves hurtling through news feeds, propelled by the clicks of well-meaning users. In this new digital commons, fake news can often wear the guise of truth. This confluence of exposure and misinformation represents a formidable attack on the strongholds of established institutions, a siege against which rebuilding ramparts of trust proves a Sisyphean task. The adage, once bitten, twice shy, resonates in the collective consciousness. With the veil of integrity lifted and revealing flaws and failings, faith in institutional propriety faces a steep climb to recovery. Part 4. Trust in the Marketplace how the sharing economy thrives on peer connections. The surge of the sharing economy is not merely a business trend, it's a potent testament to the rise of distributed trust, the trust that's not placed in faceless corporations, but rather woven among people across the globe. This modern economic model has shifted away from the traditional practice of selling products through physical stores and platforms. Instead, it thrives on the idea of peer-to-peer interaction, facilitated by the connective power of the Internet. Companies like Uber and Airbnb have become household names by tapping into this fresh vein of distributed trust. They empower their users to turn dormant assets, such as vehicles sitting idle in driveways or spare rooms gathering dust, into sources of income by sharing them with others. The staggering success of these platforms is hard to ignore. Uber, with a valuation of $68 billion, has outpaced giants of industry, eclipsing the likes of Deutsche Bank and FedEx. Airbnb trails close behind as the world's second largest hospitality enterprise, boasting a worth of $31 billion. The growth of Alibaba, the colossal Chinese e-commerce platform, presents an even more striking example. Launched in 1999 by Jack Ma, it serves as a gargantuan virtual marketplace where you can purchase anything from rubber boots to live animals. Surpassing retail behemoth Walmart in 2016, 
Alibaba's phenomenal expansion is a clear signal of the new era we're in. The DNA shared amongst these giants? A robust network of trust among their user base. In the world of online transactions, trust is the currency of commerce, as critical as the money that changes hands. Jack Ma's Alibaba safeguards this trust meticulously by holding payments in escrow until buyers confirm the receipt of their goods. When Ma uncovered fraudulent practices within his organization, he sent a clear message of zero tolerance by dismissing employees and executives alike. This protective infrastructure emboldens us to leap further into the realm of trust. We engage with these platforms with the assurance that we won't be abandoned should an issue arise. This confidence is reinforced by another crucial element, a hidden backbone of the sharing economy, which we will explore next. Part 5. The Transparent Impact of Ratings on Trustworthiness In a landscape sculpted by technological innovation, the marketplace has become a stage where every action is subject to audience review. The advent of rating systems across platforms means that individuals and businesses alike are incentivized to act with integrity. The prospect of negative feedback serves as a deterrent against short-sighted deceit. Our reputations precede us. There's an indelible trail of digital breadcrumbs retracing our interactions and exchanges. Like footprints in the sand, our reputation trail is scanned by others who are gauging our trustworthiness. In turn, our assessments of others inform our decisions to engage with them. Both service providers and customers on platforms like Uber and Airbnb understand this dynamic intimately. The clarity of the past paints expectations for the future. A pattern of poor choices can reverberate indefinitely. Interestingly, this dynamic holds true even within the shadowy boundaries of the darknet. Suppose you're a vendor dealing in clandestine goods, operating under the veil of anonymity. Even here, Reputation governs commerce. A drug dealer peddling transparently is more likely to be entrusted by customers as a robust rating system acts as a beacon for trust, shining light on the trustworthiness or lack thereof in this internet underworld. But the influence of ratings breaches far beyond rides and rentals. It opens doors to deeply personal exchanges. Consider Urban Sitter, an app that stands as a digital bridge between parents and babysitters. The paradox is both modern and profound. The first handshake between parent and sitter often coincides with the moment the babysitter crosses the threshold into a role woven with deep personal trust. How can one leave their most precious beings in the hands of a stranger? The answer, again, lies in the power of peer ratings. Urban Sitter amalgamates data points, reviews, introduction videos, mutual connections into a profile radiating the sitter's reputation. It brings comfort in statistics, assurance in community endorsement. While ratings have indeed bolstered trust between strangers, there looms the question of balance. Can this system be pushed to an extreme? As we venture further, we will peel back the layers to reveal the potential risks of an over-reliance on ratings. Part 6. China's Social Credit System a leap toward national trust metrics. Imagine a world where your every action, from financial transactions to social media posts, contributes to a numerical representation of your trustworthiness, a single score that follows you through life, affecting everything from job prospects to travel opportunities. This isn't the plot of a dystopian novel, but a reality that's being rolled out in China with the impending full-scale implementation of the social credit system, SCS, by 2020. The SCS, which is currently in a voluntary phase, aims to encompass every citizen with a comprehensive trustworthiness rating. The criteria for calculating these scores go beyond traditional metrics like credit worthiness to include behavior, preferences, and even the quality of one's social networks. Two companies, Sesame Credit and China Rapid Finance are tasked with distilling the vast streams of data into this all-encompassing score. A wrongly worded social media post or association with individuals critical of the government 
can cause a dip in someone's score. In this system, merely being connected to someone who voices dissent can reflect negatively on your perceived trustworthiness, as guilt by association becomes quantifiable. The implications of a low score in the SES are profound. Citizens might find themselves deprioritized for visas, facing hurdles in the job market, or seeing a drop in social status as their dating profiles are ranked lower on matching sites. In this tightly woven fabric of surveillance and conformity, the pressure to uphold a pristine rating is an omnipresent force influencing behavior. What remains to be scrutinized is whether such surveillance will be unilaterally applied or if government officials will stand under the same unforgiving spotlight. The SCS brings forth challenging questions. How much of our freedom are we willing to trade for trust? And at what point does the quest for a trustworthy society compromise the very trust it seeks to build? Part 7. Blockchain. The beacon of trust in the digital evolution. The buzz around blockchain is more than just tech industry chatter. It signals a revolution in how we bestow and perceive trust. The key appeal of blockchain technology lies in its inherent design as an unalterable digital ledger, a record-keeping mechanism that can track and store the lineage of virtually anything of value. Let's delve into the journey of a diamond as an illustration. The precious gem industry, clouded by ethical concerns regarding the sourcing of blood diamonds from conflict zones, has long dealt with transparency issues. With blockchain, each phase of a diamond's path, from the depths of the earth to the gleam of a jewelry store, can be meticulously logged and verified. By creating an incorruptible trace, trust between the seller and the buyer is fortified, and illicit trade gets a formidable opponent. Everledger, a trailblazing startup, is harnessing the power of blockchain with the aim to purify the diamond market. They stand at the frontier, demonstrating blockchain's potential to solidify trust in an industry beset by skepticism. The utility of blockchain isn't confined to tangible goods. In a world grappling with the menace of fake news, having a permanent and transparent ledger could turn the tide against misinformation. Claims and data could be authenticated with ease, choking off the spread of falsehoods before they can infect the public discourse. The advent of blockchain promises not just an enhancement in product transparency, but a full-scale transformation in societal interactions. The institutional trust that once required us to lean on experts, lawyers, brokers, agents, could be rendered obsolete. What if, instead of relying on these intermediaries, individuals could access and interpret the necessary data independently? Consider the process of buying a house. In a blockchain-enabled world, a treasure trove of information about the property's history, from prior renovations to valuation records, would be available for potential buyers. The power dynamic shifts. You become the expert, empowered by data to make informed decisions. Rachel Botsman envisions a future where blockchain isn't just a convenience. It's an essential, integrated fabric of our trust-based decisions. As we edge into the next decade, our societal leaps of trust may grow ever larger, perhaps leading us to marvel at how we ever manage to conduct business, verify truth, or place our confidence in anything before blockchain entered the scene. Final summary. In our rapidly evolving society, the concept and dynamics of trust are witnessing a monumental shift. The traditional hierarchical model, where we placed our faith in the hands of established institutions, is giving way to a more democratized, peer-to-peer -peer form of trust. Central to this transformation are the rating systems that anchor new platforms like Airbnb, Uber, and Alibaba. These systems inject transparency and accountability into every transaction, nudging us to be our most trustworthy selves in the knowledge that we're being evaluated by our peers. This newfound ability to trust, informed by ratings and reviews, extends beyond the sharing economy and into profoundly personal spheres of our lives, such as childcare. Yet, as we navigate this landscape, we're also facing new challenges and considerations, illustrated by China's implementation of a trustworthiness rating for citizens that might encroach on personal freedom and privacy. Looking further ahead,
blockchain technology emerges as the potential vanguard of this trust revolution. By providing a detailed, immutable record of histories and transactions, blockchain could negate the need for middlemen entirely, allowing us to interact directly and confidently with the world around us. These forces, from rating systems to blockchain, herald a new era where trust is not a given, but a built and sustained commodity, reshaping how we connect, conduct business, and grant our confidence to others. As we plunge into this era, we might soon find that our reliance on traditional institutions was just one step in the long walk of trust's evolution. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.